Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation 2018 series. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and you are watching the tutorials on ISTQB. Today the topic is why testing is important, why testing is necessary is the second topic on the first chapter. And we will be getting into the details of that to understand quickly that why testing is considered important. Now, generally, we say that testing is uh, one of the way by which you try to find out as many defects as possible so that the defects can be identified and fixed. So, testing really contributes by many means uh, within the process or the development life cycle by contributing in evaluating the quality, defining the quality, gaining the confidence or attaining that required coverage on the product. So generally we have a different set of altogether different techniques which can be applied at appropriate levels which can help you to achieve uh, the exact coverage or uh, quality in the process. So it is contributed by different means. So generally we are talking about testing's contribution to success that how exactly testing can really contribute to make the project or the product successful one. So we have some good practices listed here right from the second point. If you have a look there, we have got uh, having testers involved in the requirement reviews or user story refinement could defect, detect defects in these work products. So we are talking from the point of uh, identifying a defect at an early stage, which uh, generally means that a uh, tester being involved at an early uh, stage or in the life cycle could help find defects at an early stage which are cheaper to fix and may uh, also add value to uh, learn lessons from there and improvise the work products from the beginning itself. So these are the different ways by which we can contribute to the success of the entire life cycle. So one is that like you talk about reviewing the requirements. Second is working closely with the designers so that we can also contribute by reviewing the designs. Working closely with developers may help us to understand what exactly the code is all about and we can create a effective set of test cases to uh, evaluate those code and also maybe you know talking about getting involved with both the activities like static testing dynamic testing could help you to find different failures and build that understanding among the testers to create those effective set of test cases which would help them to find different defects than usual and obviously will you know deal with further analysis to debug the defects which will be easier for the entire process uh, there's a new thing which is added in this syllabus called as quality assurance and testing. So generally there's a relation between uh, quality assurance with the testing. So we generally say that uh, quality assurance and quality control are the two things which comes into consideration when we talk about the word quality. Now quality is generally uh, achieved by finding as many failures as possible, reducing the risk in the process or the product, and uh, making sure the product goes live with all successful executions. But when it comes to the differentiation between quality assurance and quality control, many people have that confusion that <clears throat> what exactly QA and QC is. So here we have got a clarity, like when you talk about QA, is uh, generally the uh, team or uh, the organization within the uh, company which deals with defining the process, measures, or steps which we, if you take, well, we can really go ahead and get the quality what we are looking at. So generally, QA defines the measures, defines the process which we need to follow to attain the defined or fixed quality on the product. But on the other side, when you talk about quality control, it includes different activities or including the test activities which support all your executions. Maybe it can be test cases, it can be test case preparation, test case executions, defect logging, defect reports, any such thing which you create as a part of it, you call it as control to achieve that defined quality. So QA altogether means uh, defining the process of making or uh, attaining that quality and to follow that process and conduct activities under that process is what you call it as quality control. So in simple terms, I mean to say that testers comes as a part of quality control where they do that as ground level by conducting several activities to achieve the defined quality. 
Error, defect, and failure. These are three uh, different terms which uh, need to be understood at this point of time. When you talk about uh, error, uh, we do have a synonym for that called as mistake. Many people have a difference that, uh, you know, error, mistake are different things. But as per ISTQB, error is same as mistake, which just means that an human action which produces an incorrect result. Or we say that if a human does anything wrong unintentionally in any environment, we call it as a mistake. And generally, we use the word error in ISTQB, which is to say that it is from the programming environment where a human does something wrong and it results into an incorrect result. Then, of course, we call it as an error. An error. And when you talk about fault, fault is also known as defect or bug, where officially bug is not a formal name. It is an informal name of defect and fault, defect, bug, anyways, means same as per ISTQB. So generally we say that a fault is something which is deviation between the expected and actual and that's how you defined it. So when you execute a test case and the test case fails, you see a deviation between the expected and actual and you call it as a defect. And that's what is called as fault or bug. So there's no such difference between fault, defect, bug. It's just the synonyms of fault that you call it as defect and bug. The failure uh, is another thing to be understood at this point of time. We call it as uh, generally the execution with the approach what testers ex exactly execute on the product and conduct failures. So generally when your test case fails uh, while you execute it on the application, you call it as a failure. So all I can say at the end here is that a tester generally conducts as many failures as possible so that defects can be identified and corrected. So testers are responsible to conduct failures on the application to identify different defects. <clears throat> Causes of software defects? Yes, uh, of course, we need to understand at this point of time that what could be the common reasons why defects uh, are being introduced into the uh, application or the documentation or why do we find defects what are the common reasons for it so here is a list of uh, common defects what we generally face is uh, errors may occur for these following reasons as they're listed generally we face challenges with the time pressure which could be one of the thing where we start making things faster and ignoring a lot of things and generally conduct mistake or do mistakes Human is error prone. We do agree that we people can make mistakes. We are not machines and human can go wrong at any point of time. So that could be another reason for having defects in the system because as you prepare the code, you design it, you may go wrong with that. Inexperienced or insufficiently skilled people or project participants or stakeholders like the right person for the right job is equally important and maybe the person who is testing the product or designing the product are not sufficiently experienced with their skill set and may go wrong with you know having a poor uh, knowledge about defining the right set of requirements defining the right design refining or writing the right code for that particular expectation could be lacked here Miscommunication between the project participants, generally that's another thing like miscommunication. You try to communicate something and the other person understands it the other way around. Could lead to defects, of course. So we make sure that the, what you try to convey to someone you acknowledge or you try to ask that person what exactly that person has understood on the other side. <clears throat> Complexity of the code, design, architecture, or any other thing as a work product in the process could be another thing. As you deal with daily, on daily basis, you move into complexity of the different types of application. So as complex it will be, the chances of doing something wrong would be more. And generally you go wrong with those things and that could be called as a defect later in future when it comes to an application development. So complexity is the another parameter uh, by which you can say that we can have one of the reasons to uh, introduce the defect into the system. Misunderstanding about the intrasystem and intersystem uh, interfaces. So generally this is about uh, the human understanding about the requirement details that you assume that within the system, we call it as intrasystem, which is like integration testing, component integration testing, system testing, where internally when the modules are connected, what exactly is the requirement? 
is it that like the module 1 must be connected to module 2 and also module 3 then I need to make sure that module 1 is tested with module 1 module 1 is tested with module 2 module 1 is tested with module 3 when it comes to intrasystem that is SIT system integration testing when two different softwares are being integrated or it can be like between two different hardwares or even hardware and software when you talk about embedded testing you say uh, you deal with such interfaces. So you make sure that the misunderstandings are not being done. You take extra precautionary measures, extra uh, knowledge implementation to avoid such common mistakes. And moreover, you know, we talk about moving into an era where uh, things are being uh, imagined and it is developed the next day. So we are talking about everyday newly built application, unfamiliar technologies being developed on each day basis. So that's another thing which could be a common reason for the causes of defect and where the defect is introduced. So that's all from why testing is necessary. Uh, of course, uh, beyond this, if you have any queries, any questions, you're free to comment below. In case uh, you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel and feel free to ask me any questions beyond that. We will be coming up with another tutorial. Till then, stay tuned. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.